Remember the 90s and how it was such a strange time? Remakes of old TV shows actually in theaters turned out pretty good. Stallone was hanging from a cliff. Spielberg did a really cool movie about dinosaurs and a tragic film about the Holocaust. Video games were violent and man were they fun. Grunge was all the rage, but it's not like we really cared at the time. Oh, and one more thing came from the 90s. Trading card games. Or customizable card games. Or collectible card games. It gave collecting trading card games a purpose. You get more cards, you improve your strategy to win, you shrink your wallet. We're not talking about those kitty ones based on flavorless anime licenses. No, we're talking about ones that were based on a respectable license. In fact, this was the very first license-based game that got the ball rolling. universe. Around 1997, Decipher was given full reign of the entire Star Trek universe. This was a year after Skybox's unsuccessful attempt to popularize a Star Trek card game of their own based on the original series. A most illogical move corrected by our friends at Decipher. The gameplay is pretty unique in terms of card games. It doesn't rely on the basic tactic of two sides attacking each other. The game actually emulates an episode of Star Trek. You basically start out shuffling your deck. Next, you have to assemble a crew Staff a ship, explore the space line, attempt any of the planet or space missions, overcome the dilemma card seated underneath, and meet the requirements of the mission if your crew has the necessary skills and or attributes. And if you do, then you score the points in the score box. The first player to reach 100 points wins the game. Game sounds pretty easy, right? Well... Compared to this game, Arkham Horror is like... cornholing. Not the sodomy-based game, which the rules to that game are pretty simple, too. It's actually a fun beanbag game. You throw a bag in a hole. Okay, it's pretty much like the sodomy game, but very simple, and, and, and you know, you get what I'm saying. It's not impossible to learn all the rules, but you might need to take a three-year course at Starfleet Academy to understand everything. Setup also takes some time. In fact, it's ironic that the representation is building the entire galaxy that your crew is going to explore. What's worse is that you might not even end up touching some of the missions at all. If you're not using opposing affiliations, sometimes this game can seem like double solitaire. After all, Federation ships don't fire on their own. So if there's a couple rules you can bend, fucking bend them. The rules are almost infinite, and the setup takes some time to get going. Does that mean it's a terrible game? Shit no! Out of all the video games, board games, and other so-called simulations of Star Trek, this is the only one I can honestly say that makes me feel like I'm experiencing an episode. Most of the time, other games get hung up on ship-to-ship -ship combat. I'll admit, there's shooting in Star Trek, but that's just a small part. Remember when the Enterprise would stop by a planet? Captain's log, star date 1513.1. Captain Kirk would beam down with his buddies. Some jabrones would get killed. That way, I never saw anything like Kirk would get some action. Spock would lose control. Spock, Lieutenant Uhura here. Captain Affleck, let me alone! Bones with trip balls. Killers! Assassins! I won't let you! I'll kill you first! Kirk would kick some ass. Spock would feel. Pain! And then he'd do this. Sir, there's a Mount Halligan creature crawling on your shoulder. Kirk would get some more action. Right. McCoy would make everybody trip balls. Whoever he is. He sure talks gloomy. <laughs> I will 
wonder who it is we're not supposed to be afraid of. <laughs> and the crew would learn a valuable lesson via an energy beam. And in the end, everyone would sit around and have a drink. That's what you get when you play this game. And yeah, it's got some ship combat. Eventually, Decipher came out with a second edition that simplified some of the rules. It was great for beginners, but the game's inherent atmosphere suffered a little. If you want to play this game, try the first edition. It has a huge learning curve, but it's worth it if you're a fan of Star Trek. If you're not, you can always be Pikachu, or Squirtle, Pokemon. It's the reason why we have Twilight. <laughs>